The Girondins French, ID, Girondists or Gironde were members of a loosely knit political faction during the French Revolution. From 1791 to 1793, the Girondins were active in the Legislative Assembly and the National Convention. Together with the Montagnards, they initially were part of the Jacobin movement. They campaigned for the end of the monarchy, but then resisted the spiraling momentum of the revolution, which caused a conflict with the more radical Montagnards. They dominated the movement until their fall in the insurrection of 31 May to 2 June 1793, which resulted in the domination of the Montagnards and the purge and mass execution of the Girondins. This event is considered to mark the beginning of the Reign of Terror. The Girondins were a group of loosely affiliated individuals rather than an organized political party and the name was at first informally applied because the most prominent exponents of their point of view were deputies to the Legislative Assembly from the département of Gironde in southwest France. Girondin leader Jacques-Pierre Brousseau proposed an ambitious military plan to spread the revolution internationally, therefore the Girondins were the war party in 1792–1793. Other prominent Girondins included Jean-Marie Roland and his wife Madame Roland. They also had an ally in the English-born American activist Thomas Paine. Brousseau and Madame Roland were executed and Jean Roland who had gone into hiding committed suicide when he learned about the execution. Paine was imprisoned, but he narrowly escaped execution. The famous painting Death of Merit depicts the killing of the fiery radical journalist and denouncer of the Girondins Jean-Paul Merit by the Girondin sympathizer Charlotte Corday, who was executed. Although the revolution abolished the three estates voting royals and nobles voting against the peasantry, factions made impossible any republican countrywide representation. Identity. The collective name, Girondins, is used to describe a, a loosely knit group of French deputies who contested the Montagnards for control of the National Convention. They were never an official organization or political party. The name itself was bestowed not by any of its alleged members but from the Montagnards, who claimed as early as April 1792 that a counter revolutionary faction had coalesced around deputies of the Department of the Gironde. Jacques-Pierre Brousseau, Jean-Marie Roland and François Bouzeau were among the most prominent of such deputies and contemporaries called their supporters Brissotins, Rolandins, or Bouzotins, depending on which politician was being blamed for their leadership. Other names were employed at the time too, but Girondins ultimately became the term favored by historians. The term became standard with Alphonse de Lamartine's history of the Girondins in 1847. History Rise Twelve deputies represented the département of the Gironde and there were six who sat for this département in both the Legislative Assembly of 1791–1792 and the National Convention of 1792–1795. Five were lawyers, Pierre Victorin Verganayo, Marguerite Elie Guadet, Armand Jensenet, Jean Antoine Lafargue de Grangeneuve, and Jean Jay, who was also a Protestant pastor. The other, Jean Francois Ducos, was a tradesman. In the Legislative Assembly, they represented a compact body of opinion which, though not as yet definitely Republican, i.e., against the monarchy, was considerably more advanced than the moderate royalism of the majority of the Parisian deputies. A group of deputies from elsewhere became associated with these views, most notably the Marquis de Condorcet, Claude Fauché, Marc David Lesource, Maximin Isnard, the Comte de Cursaint, Henri Lariviere, and above all Jacques Pierre Brousseau, Jean Marie Roland, and Jerome Pechin, who was elected mayor of Paris in succession to Jean Sylvain Bailly on 16 November 1791. Madame Roland, whose salon became their gathering place, had a powerful influence on the spirit and policy of the Girondins. The party cohesion they possessed was connected to the energy of Brousseau, who came to be regarded as their mouthpiece in the assembly and in the Jacobin club, hence the name, Brissotins, for his followers. The group was identified by its enemies at the start of the National Convention the 20th of September 1792. Brissotins and Girondins 
were terms of opprobrium used by their enemies in a separate faction of the Jacobin Club, who freely denounced them as enemies of democracy. <laughs> Foreign policy In the Legislative Assembly, the Girondins represented the principle of democratic revolution within France and patriotic defiance to the European powers. They supported an aggressive foreign policy and constituted the War Party in the period 1792–1793, when revolutionary France initiated a long series of revolutionary wars with other European powers. Brousseau proposed an ambitious military plan to spread the revolution internationally, one that Napoleon later pursued aggressively. Brousseau called on the National Convention to dominate Western Europe by conquering the Rhineland, Poland and the Netherlands with a goal of creating a protective ring of satellite republics in Great Britain, Spain and Italy by 1795. The Girondins also called for war against Austria, arguing it would rally patriots around the revolution, liberate oppressed peoples from despotism, and test the loyalty of King Louis XVI. Montagnards versus Girondins Girondins at first dominated the Jacobin Club, where Brousseau's influence had not yet been ousted by Maximilien Robespierre and they did not hesitate to use this advantage to stir up popular passion and intimidate those who sought to stay the progress of the revolution. They compelled the king in 1792 to choose a ministry composed of their partisans, among them Roland, Charles-François Dumouriez, Étienne Clavier and Joseph-Marie Servin de Gerby, and they forced a declaration of war against Habsburg Austria the same year. In all of this activity, there was no apparent line of cleavage between La Gironde and the Mountain. Montagnards and Girondins alike were fundamentally opposed to the monarchy, both were Democrats as well as Republicans, and both were prepared to appeal to force in order to realize their ideals. Despite being accused of wanting to weaken the central government, federalism, the Girondins desired as little as the Montagnards to break up the unity of France. From the first, the leaders of the two parties stood in avowed opposition, in the Jacobin Club as in the Assembly. Temperament largely accounts for the dividing line between the parties. The Girondins were doctrinaires and theorists rather than men of action. They initially encouraged armed petitions, but then were dismayed when this led to the emute riot of 20 June 1792. Jean-Marie Roland was typical of their spirit, turning the Ministry of the Exterior into a publishing office for tracts on civic virtues while riotous mobs were burning the château unchecked in the provinces. Girondins did not share the ferocious fanaticism or the ruthless opportunism of the future Montagnard organizers of the Reign of Terror. As the revolution developed, the Girondins often found themselves opposing its results. The overthrow of the monarchy on the 10th of August 1792 and the September massacres of 1792 occurred while they still nominally controlled the government, but the Girondins tried to distance themselves from the results of the September massacres. When the National Convention first met on of September 1792, the corps of like-minded deputies from the Gironde expanded as Jean-Baptiste Boyer Fanfrede, Jacques Lacaze and François Burgoing joined five of the six stalwarts of the Legislative Assembly Jean Jay, the Protestant pastor, drifted toward the Montagnard faction. Their numbers were increased by the return to national politics by former National Constituent Assembly deputies such as Jean-Paul Rabout Saint-Étienne, Pechin and Curvelagan, as well as some newcomers as the writer Thomas Paine and popular journalist Jean-Louis Cara. Decline and fall The Girondins proposed suspending the king and summoning of the National Convention, but they agreed not to overthrow the monarchy until Louis XVI became impervious to their counsels. Once the king was overthrown in 1792 and a republic was established, they were anxious to stop the revolutionary movement that they had helped to set in motion. Girondins and historian Pierre-Claude-François Dano argues in his memoirs that the Girondins were too cultivated and too polished to retain their popularity for long in times of disturbance, and so they were more inclined to work for the establishment of order, which would mean the guarantee of their own power. The Girondins, who had been the radicals of the Legislative Assembly 1791 became the conservatives of the Convention 1792 .The revolution failed to deliver the immediate gains that had been promised and this made it difficult for the Girondins to draw it to a close easily in the minds of the public. 
Moreover, the Septembrisers the supporters of the September massacres such as Robespierre, Danton, Merritt and their lesser allies realized that not only their influence but their safety depended on keeping the revolution alive. Robespierre, who hated the Girondins, had proposed to include them in the proscription lists of September 1792, the Mountain Club to a man who desired their overthrow. A group including some Girondins prepared a draft constitution known as the Girondin Constitutional Project, which was presented to the National Convention in early 1793. Thomas Paine was one of the signers of this proposal. The crisis came in March 1793. The Girondins, who had a majority in the convention, controlled the executive council and filled the ministries, believed themselves invincible. Their orators had no serious rivals in the hostile camp. Their system was established in the purest reason, but the Montagnards made up for what they lacked in talent or in numbers through their boldness and fanatical energy. This was especially fruitful since uncommitted delegates accounted for almost half the total number, even though the Jacobins and Brissidens formed the largest groups. The more radical rhetoric of the Jacobins attracted the support of the revolutionary Paris Commune, the revolutionary sections mass assemblies in districts and the National Guard of Paris and they had gained control of the Jacobin Club, where Brissot, absorbed in departmental work, had been superseded by Robespierre. At the trial of Louis XVI in 1792, most Girondins had voted for the «appeal to the people» and so laid themselves open to the charge of «royalism». They denounced the domination of Paris and summoned provincial levies to their aid and so fell under suspicion of federalism. They strengthened the revolutionary commune by first decreeing its abolition but withdrawing the decree at the first sign of popular opposition. In the suspicious temper of the times, their vacillation was fatal. Merritt never ceased his denunciations of the faction by which France was being betrayed to her ruin and his cry of Nous sommes traîtres, We are betrayed was echoed from group to group in the streets of Paris. The growing hostility of Paris to the Girondins received a fateful demonstration by the election on 15 February 1793 of the bitter ex-Girondin Jean-Nicolas Patch to the mayoralty. Patch had twice been Minister of War in the Girondins' government, but his incompetence had laid him open to strong criticism and on 4 February 1793 he had been replaced as Minister of War by a vote of the convention. This was enough to secure him the votes of the Paris electors when he was elected mayor ten days later. The mountain was strengthened by the accession of a significant ally whose one idea was to use his new power to avenge himself on his former colleagues. Mayor Patch, with procureur of the commune Pierre Gaspard Chamet and deputy procureur Jacques René Ebert, controlled the armed militias of the 48 revolutionary sections of Paris and prepared to turn this weapon against the convention. The abortive emute of 10 March warned the Girondins of their danger and they responded with defensive moves, including the appointment of the Commission of Twelve on 18 May, the arrest of Merritt and Ebert and other precautionary measures. They unintentionally increased the prestige of their most vocal and bitter critic Merritt by prosecuting him before the Revolutionary Tribunal, where his acquittal in April 1793 was a foregone conclusion. The ominous threat by Girondin leader Maximin Isnard, uttered on 25 May, too. March France upon Paris, was instead met by Paris marching hastily upon the convention. The Girondin role in the government was undermined by the popular uprisings of 27 and 31 May and finally on 2 June 1793, when François Henriot, head of the Paris National Guards, purged the convention of the Girondins see insurrection of 31 May to 2 June 1793. Reign of Terror A list drawn up by the Commandant General of the Parisian National Guard François Henriot with help from Merit and endorsed by a decree of the Intimidated Convention, included 22 Girondin deputies and 10 of the 12 members of the Commission of Twelve, who were ordered to be detained at their lodgings, under the safeguard of the people. Some submitted, among them Gensinet, Guadet, Verganayo, Pechin, Barato and Boyer Finfrede. Others, including Brousseau, Louvet, Bouzeau, La Source, Grangeneuve, Lariviere, and Burgoing, escaped from Paris and, joined later by Guadet, Pechin, and Barato, set to work to organize a movement of the provinces against the capital. This attempt to stir up civil war made the wavering and frightened convention suddenly determined. 
On 13 June 1793, it voted that the city of Paris deserved well of the country and ordered the imprisonment of the detained deputies, the filling up of their places in the assembly by their suppleants and the initiation of vigorous measures against the movement in the provinces. The assassination of Merritt by Charlotte Corday on 13 July 1793 only served to increase the unpopularity of the Girondins and seal their fate. The excuse for the terror that followed was the imminent peril of France, menaced on the east by the advance of the armies of the First Coalition Austria, Prussia and Great Britain on the west by the Royalist revolt in the Vendée and the need for preventing at all costs the outbreak of another civil war. On 28 July 1793, a decree of the convention proscribed 21 deputies, five of whom were from the Gironde, as traitors and enemies of their country Antiboul, Boyo the Younger, Boyer Finfrede, Brousseau, Cara, Duchastel, the Younger Ducos, de Friche de Velasse, Duprat, Fauché, Garden, Gensonet, Lacaze, La Source, Lose Diparet, La Hardy, Lesterpte Beauvais, the Elder Minviel, Sillery, Virgonio and Viger. Those were sent to trial. Another 39 were included in the final ACTE decusation, accepted by the Convention on 24 October 1793, which stated the crimes for which they were to be tried as their perfidious ambition, their hatred of Paris, their «federalism», and above all their responsibility for the attempt of their escaped colleagues to provoke civil war. <laughs> 1793 trial of Girondins The trial of the 22 began before the Revolutionary Tribunal on 24 October 1793. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. On 31 October, they were born to the guillotine. It took 36 minutes to cut off 22 heads, of those who escaped to the provinces, after wandering about singly or in groups most were either captured and executed or committed suicide. They included Barbaroux, Buzo, Condorcet, Grangeneuve, Guadet, Cursaint, Pechin, Rabout de saint Etienne, and Rebecchi. Roland killed himself at Rouen on 15 November 1793, a week after the execution of his wife. A very few escaped, including Jean-Baptiste Louvet de Couvray, whose memoirs give a detailed picture of the sufferings of the fugitives. Girondins as martyrs The survivors of the party made an effort to re-enter the convention after the fall of Robespierre on 27 July 1794, but it was not until 5 March 1795 that they were formally reinstated. On 3 October of that same year, 11 Vendemiaire, year IV, a solemn fete in honor of the Girondins, Martyrs of Liberty, was celebrated in the convention. In her autobiography, Madame Roland reshapes her historical image by stressing the popular connection between sacrifice and female virtue. Her Memoirs de Madame Roland was written from prison where she was held as a Girondin sympathizer. It covers her work for the Girondins while her husband Jean Marie Roland was interior minister. The book echoes such popular novels as Rousseau's Julie or The New Eloise by linking her feminine virtue and motherhood to her sacrifice in a cycle of suffering and consolation. Roland says her mother's death was the impetus for her odyssey from virtuous daughter to revolutionary heroine, as it introduced her to death and sacrifice, with the ultimate sacrifice of her own life for her political beliefs. She helped her husband escape, but she was executed on 8 November 1793. A week later he committed suicide. A monument to the Girondins was erected in Bordeaux between 1894 and 1902 dedicated to the memory of the Girondin deputies who were victims of the terror. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ideology. The Gironde was the expression of the lesser nobility, landowners and the bourgeoisie. Because its members were mainly from Bordeaux, Gironde, the group had a federalist inspiration. Influenced by liberalism and the concept of liberal democracy, human rights and Montesquieu's separation of powers, the Girondins initially supported the constitutional monarchy, but after the flight to Varennes in which Louis XVI tried to flee Paris in order to start a counter-revolution the Girondins became mostly republicans, with a royalist minority. In its early times of government, the Gironde supported a free market supported by a constitutional right to public assistance for the poor and public education and aggressive foreign policies as well as Napoleon Bonaparte's wars. 
The Girondins were also one of the first supporters of abolitionism in France and certain Girondins such as Condorcet supported women's suffrage and political equality. On the political spectrum, the Girondins are commonly placed in the centre-left because there were no right-wing groups in the National Convention of the French First Republic. The Girondins supported radical democratic reform, secularism and a strong legislature at the expense of a weaker executive and judiciary as opposed to the populist authoritarian Montagnards, who supported public acknowledgement of a supreme being and a strong executive. Prominent members Jacques-Pierre Brousseau leader. Jean Marie Roland, Madame Roland, Maximin Isnard, Jacques Guillaume Thorat, Jean Baptiste Trailhard, Pierre Victorin Vergniaud, Armand Gensinet, Marquis de Condorcet, Pierre Claude Francois Dano, Marguerite Elie Guadet, Jacques Claude Bugnot, Louis Gustave Le Doulcet, Claude Fauché François Buzo, Charles Jean Marie Barbaru, François Aubry, Charles Louis Antiboul, Leger Felicite Sunthonax Electoral results See also Historiography of the French Revolution Liberalism and radicalism in France